<laughs> you sure eat fast, Mr. Keel. Eating don't get you nowhere, girl. Tell my daughter I went home. going, are you? Got business to tend to. You're only going back to your room and you know it. Stay. Miss Billings here and Miss Halfstadt is coming. It'll be interesting for you. Got all kinds of business to it. The only reason I came over was because the butcher told me you bought roast beef today. Very tasty, dear. Well, why don't you wait for Tom? He only went for a little walk. Do you think he'd mind if I filled my pipe? No, of course not. Oh, and here. Take some apples. You should always have some fruit in your room. No, no, I, I wouldn't think of it. Well, that must be Miss Hofstadt. Oh, Peter, this is a surprise. I was just passing by and I decided to stop in. Mr. Keel. Your Honor. You mustn't mind him, Peter. He's getting terribly old. She just happened to drop in. That's all right. Would you like something to eat? No, no thanks. I, I can't take hot food in the evening. Not with my stomach. Well, can't I ever get you to eat anything in this house? Bless you. I stick to my tea and toast. Much healthier, and more economical. You sound as though Tom and I throw money out the window. Not you, Catherine. He wouldn't be home, would he? No, he went for a little walk with the boys. You don't think that's dangerous right after dinner? No. That sounds like my brother. I doubt it so soon. Come in, please. Miss Hofstad. Sorry I was late. I was held up at the printing shop. Good evening, Your Honor. Ms. Hofstad, on business, no doubt. Partly. It's about an article for the paper. Ha! I don't doubt that. I understand my brother has become a prolific contributor to, what do you call it, the People's Daily Liberator. <laughs> <laughs> the People's Daily Messenger, sir. The doctor sometimes honors the messenger when he wants to uncover the real truth about some subject. The truth! <laughs> I see. Oh, would you like a bite to eat? I don't want you to think I blame the doctor for using your paper. After all, every performer goes for the audience that applauds him the most. It's really not your paper I have anything against, Miss Hofstadt. I really didn't think so, Your Honor. As a matter of fact, I happen to admire the spirit of tolerance in this town. It's magnificent. Just don't forget we have it because we all believe in the same thing. It brings us together. Kirsten Springs, you mean? The Springs, Ms. Hofstad, our wonderful new Springs. They've changed the soul of this town. Mark my words, Kirsten Springs is going to put us on the map, no question about it. That's what Tom says, too. Everything is shooting ahead. Real estate going up, money changing hands every hour, Business humming. And no more unemployment. Right. Give us a really good summer and the sick people will be coming here in carloads. The springs will become a regular fad. A new Carlsbad. And for once, the well-to-do people won't be the only ones paying taxes in this town. I hear reservations are really starting to come in. Coming in every day. Looks very promising. Very promising. That's fine. Then the doctor's article will come in handy. He's written something again? No, it's just a piece he wrote at the beginning of the winter, recommending the water. But at the time, I let the article lie. Why? Some hitch in it? Oh, no. I just thought it would have 
a bigger effect in the spring when people start planning for the summer. That's smart, Ms. Hofstad. Very smart. Well, Tom is always so full of ideas about the springs. Why, every day he well, comes he up with... Well, he ought to be. He gets his salary from the springs, my dear. Oh, I think it's more than that, don't you? After all, Dr. Stockman created Kirsten Springs. You don't say. Well, I did think I had well, a certain Peter, modest part Tom in it. always says I only meant the original idea was. My brother is never at a loss for ideas. All sorts of ideas. But when it comes to putting those ideas into action, you need a different kind of man. And I did think that at least people in this now, house would Peter, have... we didn't mean to... Ah, uh, go get yourself a bite, Miss Havstad. My husband will be here any minute. Thank you. Maybe just a little something. Isn't it remarkable? Why is it that people without background can never learn tact? Why let it bother you? Can't you and Thomas share the honor like good brothers? The problem is some men are never satisfied to share, Catherine. Nonsense! You've always got along beautifully with Tom. Well, I think I hear him uh, now. Uh, hey, Catherine. <laughs> Here's another guest for you. Here's a hanger for your coat, Captain. Oh, <laughs> that's right. You don't wear overcoats. Go on in, boys. You kids must be hungry all over again. Now, come here, ha Captain Horster. I want you to get a look at this roast. Tom, dear. Oh, Peter. <laughs> Say now, <laughs> this is really nice. I'll have to go in a minute. Oh, oh, nonsense. Not with the toddy on the table. You haven't forgotten the toddy, have you, Catherine? Oh, of course not. I've got the water boiling. Uh -huh. Toddy, too? Sure, sit down. Make yourself at home. No, thanks. I don't go in for drinking parties. But this is no party. What else do you call this? It's extraordinary how you people can consume all this food and live. Oh, why? What's finer than to watch young people eat? Those are the fellows who are going to stir up the whole future. Is that so? What's there to stir up? Oh, Peter, don't worry about that. They'll let us know about that when the time comes. Old idiots like you and me will be like, I've behind. never been called that before. Now, Peter, don't jump on me every minute. You know your trouble, Peter. Your impressions are blunted. You ought to sit up there in that crooked corner of the north for five years the way I did, and then come back here, I'll tell you. It's like watching the first seven days of creation. Here? Things to work and fight for, Peter. Without that, you're dead. Uh, Catherine, uh, you sure the mail didn't come today? There was no mail today. And another thing, Peter, a good income. That's something you learn to value after you've lived on a starvation diet. When did you starve? It was pretty tough going up there a lot of the time. And now, to be able to live like a prince. Today, for instance, we had roast beef for, for dinner and sure enough, leftovers for supper too. Come here and have a piece. Oh, no, please, certainly not. Come here, at least let me show it to you. We even have a tablecloth. I saw it. <laughs> Live to the hilt. That's my motto. Anyway, Catherine says that I'm earning almost as much as we spend. <laughs> well, you are improving. Oh, Peter. That was a joke. You're supposed to laugh. Roast beef twice a day is no joke. Why can't I have the pleasure of having people around me? It is a necessity for me to see young, happy, lively people, free people, with a burning desire to do something. You'll see when Hofstad's finished. Oh, oh, yes, Hofstad. That reminds me. She told me she was going to print one of your articles. One of my articles? Yes, about the springs. An article you wrote during the winter. <laughs> oh, that one. Well, in the first place, Peter, I don't want that one printed right now. No? It sounded to me like it would be very timely. Under normal conditions, maybe so. Well, what is abnormal about the conditions now? I can't say for the moment, Peter. At least not tonight. There could be a great deal abnormal about the conditions. Then again, there could be nothing at all. 
Well, you have managed to sound mysterious. Is anything wrong, something you're not telling me? Because I wish once in a while you would remind yourself that I am the chairman of the board for the Springs. And I would like you to remember that. Now look, Peter, let's not get into each other's hair. I don't make a habit of getting into other people's hair. But I'd like to underline that everything concerning the Springs must be treated in a business-like manner through the proper channels and dealt with by the legally constituted authorities. I can't have anything done behind my back in a roundabout way. When did I ever go behind your back, Peter? You have an ingrained tendency to go your own way, Thomas, and that simply can't go on in a well-organized society. The individual really must subordinate himself to the overall, or the authorities who are in charge of the general welfare. Well, that's probably so, but what does that have to do with me? My dear Thomas, this is exactly what you will never learn. But you had better watch out, because someday you may pay dearly for it. Now I've said it, good day. Are you out of your mind? You are absolutely on the wrong track. I am usually not. Anyway, may I be excused? Goodbye, Catherine. Good evening, everyone. He left? And burned up. <laughs> what did you do to him now? What does he want from me? He can't expect me to give him an accounting of every move I make, every thought I think, until I'm ready to do it. Why? What should you make an accounting of? Just leave that to me, Catherine. Peculiar the mailman didn't come today. After a meal like that, I feel like a new woman. This house is so The mayor nice. certainly wasn't in a glowing mood tonight. It's his stomach. He has lousy digestion. I think two editors from the People's Daily Messenger didn't help either. No, it's just that Peter is a lonely man. Poor fellow. All he thinks about is official business and duties. <laughs> Not to mention all that lousy, weak tea he pours into himself. <laughs> <laughs> May we have the toddy, Catherine? I'm just getting it. <laughs> Sit over here, friends. Have a seat. Make yourselves at home. Oh, and Captain Horster, a rare guest like you. Ha <laughs> ha, sit here on the couch with me. This used to be such an ugly house, and suddenly it's beautiful. Great here man. we are. Oh, thank you, dear. <laughs> and what we need, the cigars. Elif, you know where the box is. And Morton, fetch my pipe. I have a sneaking suspicion that <laughs> Elif there is snitching a cigar here and there, but <laughs> I don't pay attention. <laughs> uh, Catherine, do you have any idea where I might have put my... Oh, he's got it. Good boy. <laughs> Help yourselves to the cigars, ladies. I think I'll stick with my pipe here. <laughs> this one went through plenty of blizzards with me up in the north. Ah, home, what an invention, huh? <laughs> Are you sailing again soon, Captain? Uh, I expect to be ready next week. And then, uh, to America, Captain? Yes, that's the plan. Oh, then you won't be home for the new election? There's going to be another election? Didn't you know? No, I don't get mixed up in those sorts of things. But you are interested in public affairs, aren't you? Frankly, I don't understand a thing about it. <laughs> well, neither do I, Captain. Perhaps I'm always so glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Just the same, you ought to vote, Captain. Even if I don't understand anything about it. Understand? What do you mean by that? Society, Captain, is like a ship. Every man must do something to help navigate the ship. <laughs> <laughs> that might be all right on shore, but on board a ship, it doesn't work out so well. Good evening. Good evening, Pedro. Great young woman. And here you are, lounging around like lizards while I'm out slaving. Well then, you come down here and be a lizard too. Come here, Petra, sit with me. <laughs> I look at her and I say to myself, how did I do it? Shall I mix a toddy for you? No, thanks. You always do mix it too strong. Oh, Father, I forgot. I have a letter for you. 
Oh, from who? I met the mailman on the way to school this morning, and he and gave you me don't your letter, too. I just didn't have time to run back. And you don't give it to me until now? I really didn't have time to run back, Father. Only if you didn't have time. Let's see it. Come on now, child. Yes, indeed. Is that the one you've been waiting for? There wouldn't happen to be a light on in my room, would there? There's a lamp on your desk, burning away. Catherine, have you seen my... What is that, Mother? I don't know, but the last couple days he's been asking again and again about the mailman. Probably an out-of-town patient of his. It could be. Poor father, he has so much to do. This ought to taste good. And by the way, what happened to the Norwegian novel you were going to translate? Oh, I started it, but I've been so busy. Oh, teaching at school again? Yes, two hours a night. Plus the high school every day? Yes, five hours, and every night a pile of lessons to correct. Well, she never stops going. Oh, I <laughs> love it. I get so wonderfully tired. She looks tired. You must be a wicked woman, Petra. Wicked? You work so much. My teacher says work is a punishment for our sins. Do <laughs> you believe that? Well, Elif, of course he believes his teacher. Don't stop him. <laughs> well, don't you like to work, Morton? Work? No. Well, then whatever will you amount to in this world? Me? Well, I'm going to be a Viking. You can't. You'd have to be a heathen. <laughs> so I'll be a heathen then. I think it's getting late, <laughs> boys. Well, I agree with you, Morton. I well, you that. certainly don't, Miss Billing. Well, yes, I do. I'm a real heathen and proud of it. You'll see, pretty soon we're all going to be heathens. And then we could do anything we want. Right, you see, Mark. Well, don't you have any homework for tomorrow, boys? You'd best go in and do it. Oh, can't we stay in here a while? No, neither of you. Now run along. Good night. Good night. Do you really think it hurts them to listen to such talk? I don't know, but I don't like it. Tom? Well, my friends, uh, there is going to be news in this oh, town. News? What kind of news? A terrific discovery, Catherine. Really? That you made? That I made. Now that the baboons running this town call me a lunatic, now they'd better watch out. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Well, what is it, Father? Oh, if only Peter were here to see this. Now human beings will see how people can walk around and make judgments like, like blind rats. What in the world's happened, Doctor? It is in the general opinion, is it not, that our town is a sound and healthy spot. Of course. Well, what's happened? Even an un a rather unusually healthy spot. A place that can be recommended not only to all people, but to sick people. But Tom, what on earth are you talking about? And I have recommended it. I have indeed written in the People's Messenger a pamphlet. Yes, yes, but... The miraculous springs that cost such a fortune to build, the entire Health Institute is a pest hole. Oh, father, the spring? Our spring? That's unbelievable. You know that, that filth up in Windmill Valley, that stuff that has such a stinking smell? It comes from the tannery up there, and that same blasted, poisonous mess comes into the miraculous water that we're actually supposed to cure people with. You mean actually where our beaches are? Exactly. Well, how are you so sure about this, Doctor? I had a suspicion about it a long time ago. And then last year, there were too many sick cases among the visitors, typhoid and gastric disturbances. That did happen. I remember Mrs. Stevenson's yes. knee. She had a At war. the time, we thought that the visitors had brought the bug. But later this winter, I got a new idea and started investigating the water. So that's what you've been doing. So I sent some samples of the water to the university for an exact chemical analysis. And that is what you have just received. This is it proof of the existence of infectious, organic matter in the water. Well, thank God you've discovered it in time. I think you can say that, Catherine. Well, isn't it wonderful? Well, what do you intend to do now, Doctor? Put the thing right, of course. Do you think that can be done? 
Maybe, if not, the whole institute is useless. But don't worry, I'm quite clear on what has to be done. Why did you keep it so secret? What did you want me to do? Go and shoot my mouth off before I knew for sure? You don't know what this means, Catherine. The whole water system has got to be changed. The whole water system? The whole water system. The intake is set too low. It's got to be raised up to a much higher spot. The whole construction's got to be ripped out. Well, Father, at last you can prove that they should have listened to you. <laughs> she remembers. Well, that's right. You did warn them. Of course I warned them. But who am I, <laughs> a mere scientist, to tell politicians where to build a health institute? <laughs> <laughs> well, now they're going to get it. Both barrels. This is tremendous. He's a great man. <laughs> it's bigger than tremendous. Petro, my report is on my desk. And Catherine, an envelope. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, wait till they see this. <laughs> Undeniable proof from the university. Along with my report. My report is five solid, explosive pages. <laughs> Is this big enough, dear? That'll be fine, dear. <laughs> and this letter goes right to the board of directors. <laughs> Will you give this to the maid? What's her name, dear? Randine, dear Randine. Tell our darling Randine to wipe her nose and head over the mayor right away. What's the matter, dear? Well, I don't know. What is Uncle Peter going to say about this? That's what I'm wondering. Oh, what can he say? He ought to be ecstatic that such an important fact was brought out before we, we started an epidemic. Now hurry, dear. <sighs> Doctor, I'd like to put a brief item about this discovery in the messenger. I'd be grateful for that now. Because the people ought to know soon. Right away. You'll be the leading man in this town, Doctor. Oh, there is really nothing to it at all. Every detective gets a lucky break once in his life, but <laughs> just the Say same. Say hi, Don't don't you think the town ought to pay Dr. Stockman some tribute or something? Oh, no, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah, putting a word for it. I'll talk to Anderson about no, it. No, no, ladies. I, I won't put up with any commotion. Even if the board of directors wanted to give me an increase. I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it, Catherine. Well, that's right. Well, cheers, Father. Cheers. Oh. cheers. I hope this brings you great honor and pleasure, Doctor. Oh, thanks, thanks, friends. There is one honor above all others. To have earned the respect of one's neighbors is, is, Catherine, I'm going to dance. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Are you there, Tom? I just got in. What's up? From Peter. It just came. Let's see. All right. I am turning here with the report you submitted. Well, what does it say? Don't just stand there. It only says that it'll come around this afternoon. Oh, well, maybe you ought to try to be home then. Oh, I sure will. I'm through with my morning visits anyway. I'm dying to see how he's going to take it. Uh, is there any doubt? <laughs> He'll probably make it look like he made the discovery, not I. Well, aren't you a little bit worried about that? Oh, underneath he'll be happy, dear. It's just that, you see, Peter is so afraid that somebody else is going to do something good for this town. Well, I wish you'd go out of your way to share the honors with him. Couldn't we say that he put you on the right track or something? Oh, I don't mind. As long as it makes everybody happy. <laughs> yeah. Father? Is it really true? Good 
morning. Come on in. It better be true or I'm going. Well, that better be true. This crazy story about the water system. Is it true? Well, of course it's <laughs> true. How did you find out about it? Oh, Petra came flying by on her way to school this morning. Oh, did she? <laughs> yeah, I thought she was trying to make a fool out of me. Now, why would she do that? Nothing gives more pleasure to young people than to make fools out of old people. But this is true, eh? Of course it's true. <laughs> Sit down and make yourself at home. Oh, well, it's pretty lucky for the town, huh? <laughs> lucky for the town. I mean that I made the discovery before it was too late. <laughs> Tom, I never thought you had the imagination to pull your own brother's leg like this. Pull his leg? <laughs> oh, good father, he's not pulling anything. How does it go now? Let me get it straight. There's some kind of a... Like little cockroaches in the water pipes. <laughs> no, not cockroaches. Well, some kind of little animals then. <laughs> Bacteria, father. Ah, but a whole mess of them, eh? Oh, there would be millions and millions. Yes. And nobody can see them but you, is that it? Well, yes, that's, <laughs> of course, anyone with a micro. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Now, father, you don't understand about bacteria. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. Oh, good girl, <laughs> you stick with them. This is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. What do you mean? But tell me, you actually think you're going to get your brother to believe this? Well, we'll see soon enough. You really think he's that crazy? I hope the whole town will be that crazy, Morton. Yeah, they probably are. Then it'll serve them right, too. They think they're so much smarter than us old times. Your good brother ordered them to bounce me out of the council, so they chased me out like a dog. <laughs> Make jackasses out of all of them, Stockman. Uh, Long eared, short tailed jackets. <laughs> Stockman, if you can get the mayor and his elegant friends to grab at this bait, I'll give a couple hundred crowns to charity and right now, right on the spot. Well, that would be very generous. I haven't generous. got much to play around with, but if you can pull the rug out from under him with this cockroach business, I'll give at least 50 <laughs> crowns to some poor people on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Maybe this will teach him to put some brains back in town hall. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, pardon me. Oh, and this one's in on it too, eh? <laughs> of course she's in on it. Couldn't I have guessed that? And it's going to be in the papers, I suppose. <laughs> well, lay it on thick. I've got to go. Oh, no, Morton. Stay a while. Let me explain it to you. Oh, don't worry. I get it. Only you can see them. <laughs> Plastic, you shouldn't do this for nothing. Well, father, <laughs> you just don't understand about bacteria. Oh. That old badger there doesn't believe a word of it. What does he think you're doing? Ha <laughs> ha, making a fool out of my brother. Imagine that. You got a few minutes? Sure, as long as you like. Have you heard from the mayor? Only that he's coming over later. I've been thinking about this since last night. You don't say. For you, as a medical man, as a scientist, this is a really rare opportunity. But I was wondering if you realize it ties in with a lot of other things. How do you mean? Sit down. What are you driving at? You said last night that the pollution is coming from impurities in the ground. It's coming from that poisonous dump up in Windmill Valley. Doctor, I think it comes from an entirely different dump. What do you mean? The same dump that has been poisoning and polluting our whole social life in this town. For heaven's sake, Helfstad, what are you talking about? Everything that matters has fallen into the hands of a few bureaucrats. Now, they're not all bureaucrats. They're all rich all with old, reputable names, and they've got everything in the palm of their hands. But they happen to possess ability and knowledge. Did they show ability and knowledge when they put the water system where they did? No, of course not, but that was a blunder, and we'll clear it up now. Do you really think it's going to be as easy as all that? Easy or not, it's got to be done. Doctor, I've made up my mind to give this whole scandal very special treatment. Now wait, you can't call it a scandal yet. Doctor. When I took over the messenger, I swore I'd blow that smug cabal of old, stubborn, self-satisfied fogies to bits. And this is the story that can do it. I still think we owe them a deep debt of gratitude for even building the springs. The mayor being your brother, I wouldn't ordinarily want to touch it. But I know you'd never let that kind of thing obstruct the truth. Of course not, but... I want you to understand me. I don't have to tell you I come from a simple family. I know in my bones what the underdog needs. He's got to have a say in the government of society. That's what brings out ability, intelligence, and self-respect in people. I can understand that, I think that, that a but... newspaper man who turns down any chance to give the underdog a lift is taking on a responsibility that I don't want. I know full well that in fancy circles they call it 
agitation, and they can call it anything they like if it makes them happy, but I have my own conscience, and then we I agree with you, Hofstad, but this is just a matter of the water supply, and it won't be as hard Oh, come in. I beg your pardon, Doctor, if I intrude. Were you looking for me, Anderson? No, I didn't know you were here. I want to speak with the doctor. What can I do for you? Come in. Is it true what I hear from Miss Billing, that you intend to campaign for a better water system? For the Institute, yes, but it's not a campaign. I just wanted to call and tell you that we are behind you a hundred percent. There, you see? Mrs. Anderson, I thank you with all my heart. We can be important, Doctor. When the little man wants to push something through, he turns out to be the majority you know. And it's always good to have the majority on your side. Yes, I could understand that, but I don't see what this is all about. It seems to me it's a straightforward business. The water Of course, is... we intend to behave with moderation. I always try to be a moderate woman. I have always known you for that, Mrs. Anderson, but The water I... system is very important to the little businessman, Doctor. Kirsten Springs is becoming a gold mine in this town, especially for the property owners, and that is why. In my capacity as chairman of the Property Owners Association. Yes. And furthermore, as a representative of the Temperance Society. You probably know, Doctor, that I am active for prohibition. So I've heard. As a result, I come into contact with all kinds of people. And since I'm known to be a solid and law-abiding citizen, I have a certain influence in this town you might even call it a little power. I know that very well, Mrs. Anderson. That's why you can see that it would be practically nothing for me to arrange a demonstration. A demonstration? What are they going to demonstrate about? The citizens of the town complimenting you for bringing this important matter to everybody's attention. Hmm. Obviously, it must be done with the utmost moderation, so as not to hurt the authorities. This could knock the big bellies right into the garbage can. No indiscretion or extreme aggressiveness toward the authorities in this Hofstadt. I don't want any wild-eyed radicalism on this thing. I've had enough of that in my time, and no good ever comes of it. But for a good and solid citizen to express his calm, frank, and free opinion is something nobody can deny. Oh, Mrs. Anderson, I thank you with all my heart. I am, I'm happy. I really am. I'm, I'm, well, I'm happy. Won't you have a glass of sherry? I am a member of the Temperance Society. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, then, how about a glass of beer? <laughs> I don't think I can go quite that far. Oh. I never take anything. Well, good day. And remember, the little man is behind you like a wall. Thank you. You have the solid majority on your side, Doctor. Yes, thanks for that. Thanks for that. So I've heard. Good day, Mrs. Anderson. Good day. You, Let me see you out. Will you be returning to the printing shop, Miss Hofstadt? I just have a thing or two to attend to here. Very Thank well. You. Well, what do you say to a little hypodermic for these fence-sitting deadheads? Why? I think Mrs. Anderson is a very sincere person. <laughs> Isn't it time we pump some guts into these well-intentioned men of goodwill? Underneath all their liberal talk, they still idolize authority, and that's got to be rooted out of this town. This blunder in the water system has to be made clear to every voter. Let me print your report. Not until I talk to my brother. I'll write an editorial in the meantime, and if the mayor won't go along with I don't that, see how you can imagine such a thing. Believe me, doctor, it's possible. And then if he still won't believe go along with Believe me, Hofstad, he will go along with my report, and you can print it, every word of it. On your word of honor. Here it is. It can't do any harm for you to read it. Just return it to me later. Good day, doctor. Good day, Hofstad. You will see. It's going to be a lot easier than you think. I hope so, Doctor. Sincerely, let me know as soon as you hear from His Honor. Catherine!
Oh, you're home already, Petra. I just got back from school. Huh. Well, hasn't he oh. been here? Who, Peter? No. But I did just have a very fascinating conversation with Hofstadt. She's really interested in my discovery. And you know what? This may have more implications than I thought at first. But do you know what I have backing me up? What in heaven's name have you got backing you up? The solid majority. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, is that good? <laughs> good? It's wonderful. You can't understand the feeling, Catherine, to know that your own town feels like a brother to you. <laughs> I haven't felt so at home in this town since, since I was a boy. <laughs> oh, that must be the front door. Oh, that must be Peter then. Come in. Oh. Good to see you, Peter. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Well, so-so. I received your thesis on the condition of the springs yesterday. Yeah, I got your note. Did you read it? I read it. Well, what do you have to say? <clears throat> Come on, Petra. Thomas. Was it really necessary to go into this investigation behind my back? Yes, until I was thoroughly convinced myself. There was no point. And now you are convinced. Of course. Aren't you too? The university chemist corroborated. You intend to present this document to the board of directors officially as the medical officer for the Springs. Yes, something's got to be done and quick. You always use such strong expressions. Among other things in your report, you say that we guarantee our guests and visitors a permanent case of poisoning. Well, Peter, what other way could you put it? Imagine poison internally and externally. So you merely conclude that we must build a waste disposal plant and reconstruct a brand new water system from the ground up. Well, can you think of any other way? How'd I get? I took a little walk over to the city engineer this morning, and in the course of conversation, I sort of jokingly mention these changes as something we might consider for the future, you know. Now the future won't be soon enough, Peter. The engineer kind of smiled at my extravagance and gave me a few facts. I don't suppose you've taken the trouble to consider what your proposed changes would cost. No, I never thought of that. Naturally, your little project would come to at least 300,000 crowns. That expensive? Oh, don't look so upset. It's only money. The worst part is it would take some two years. Two years? At the least. And what do you propose we do about the springs in the meantime? Shut them up, no doubt, because we would have to, you know. As soon as the rumor gets around that the water is dangerous, we won't have a visitor left. So that's the picture, Thomas. You have it in your power, literally, to ruin your own town. Now look, Peter, I don't want to ruin anything. Kirsten Springs are the blood supply of this town, Thomas. The only future we have here. Now will you stop and think? Well, what do you think we ought to do? Your report has not convinced me that the conditions are as dangerous as you tried to make Now them. listen, my report is worse than it. They, they are worse than my report makes them out to be. Remember, summer is coming and warm weather. I think you are exaggerating. A capable physician ought to know what precautions to take. And what then? The existing water supply for the springs is a fact, Thomas, and has got to be treated as a fact. If you are reasonable and act with discretion, the directors of the Institute will be inclined to take under consideration any means to make possible improvements, reasonably and without financial sacrifices. Oh, Peter. Do you imagine that I could ever go along with such trickery? Trickery? Yes, a trick, a fraud, a lie, a downright crime against the public and against the whole community. I said before that I am not convinced there is any actual danger. Oh, you aren't. Anything else is absolutely impossible. My report is nothing but fact. The only trouble is that it was you and your administration who insisted to put the water supply where it is. And now you are afraid to admit the blunder that you're committing. Don't you think I can see through it all? All right, then. Let's suppose.
suppose that's true. Maybe I do care a little about my reputation. I still say I do it for the good of the town. Without moral authority, there can be no government. And that is why, Thomas, it is my duty to prevent your report from reaching the board of directors. Oh. Sometime later, I will bring the matter up for discussion. In the meantime, not a single word is to reach the public. Oh, my dear Peter, do you possibly think you can prevent that? It will be prevented. It can't be. There are already too many people who know about it. Who? It can't possibly be those people at the Daily Messenger. Exactly! The free, liberal, and independent press will stand up and do its duty. You are an unbelievably irresponsible man, Thomas. Can you imagine what consequences this will have for you? For me? Yes, you and your family. What in the world are you talking about? I believe I have the right to think of myself as a helpful brother, Thomas. You always have been, Peter, and I thank you deeply for it. Don't mention it. I often couldn't help myself. I had hoped that by improving your finances, I would be able to keep you from running completely hog wild. So it was only for your sake, then. Partly, yes. What do you imagine the people think of an official whose closest relatives get themselves into trouble time and time again? And that is what I've done. You do it without knowing it. You're like a man with an automatic brain. As soon as an idea breaks into your head, no matter how idiotic it may be, you get up like a sleepwalker and start writing a pamphlet about it. But Peter, don't you think it is a citizen's duty to share a new idea with the public? The public doesn't need new ideas. The public is much better off with old ideas. <laughs> You're not even embarrassed to say that? Now look, I'm going to lay this out once and for all. You're always barking about authority. If a man gives you an order, he's persecuting you. Nothing is important enough to respect once you decide to revolt against your superiors. All right, then. I give up. I'm not going to try to change you anymore. I've told you the stakes you are playing for here, and now I am going to give you an order. And I warn you, you had better obey it if you value your career. What kind of an order? You are going to deny these rumors officially. How? You simply say that you went into the examination of the water more thoroughly, and you found that you overestimated the danger. I see and that you have complete confidence that whatever improvements are necessary, the management will certainly take care of them. My convictions come from the condition of the water. My convictions will change when the water changes and for no other reason. What are you talking about convictions? You're an official. You keep your convictions to yourself. Oh, to myself? As an official, I said. Heaven knows as a private citizen, that's something else. But as a subordinate employee of the Institute, you have no right to express any convictions or personal opinions about anything connected with policy. Peter, I am a doctor and a scientist. This has nothing to do with science. I have a right to express my opinion about anything in the world. Not about the Institute. That I forbid. You forbid? As your superior. And when I give orders, you obey. Peter, if you weren't my brother. Brother, you aren't going to stand for this. Hey, Cha. Petra! What were you two doing? Eavesdropping? Well, you were talking so loudly, we yes, couldn't help I was it. eavesdropping. That makes me very happy. You were saying something to me about forbidding. You forced me to. So you want me to spit in my own face officially, is that it? Why must you always be so colorful? And if I don't obey you, then we will publish our own statement to calm the public. Uh -huh. Good enough. And I will write against you. And I will prove that I am right and that you are wrong. And what will you do then? Then I simply won't be able to prevent your dismissal. What? Father. Dismissed from the Institute is what I said. If you want to make war on Kirsten Springs, you have no right to be on the board of directors. You would dare do that? Oh, no. You're the daring man! Uncle, this is a rotten way to treat a man like father. Will you be quiet, Petra? So young, and you've got opinions already. But that's natural. Catherine, dear, you're probably the only sane person in this house. Knock some sense into his head. Make him realize what he's driving his whole family into. 
My family concerns nobody but myself. His family and his own town. Oh, you are going to see who loves this town. <laughs> the people are going to get the full stink of this corruption. And then we'll see who loves this town. You love your town when you blindly, spitefully, stubbornly go ahead trying to cut off our most important industry. That source is poisoned, man. We are getting fat by peddling filth and corruption to innocent people. I think this has gone beyond opinions and convictions. A man that can throw that kind of insinuation around is nothing but a traitor to society. How dare you? Stop! Be careful, father. I won't expose myself to violence. You have been warned. Consider what you owe yourself and your family. Good day. He's insulted. He's insulted. It's shameful, Tom. Oh, I would love to give him a piece of my mind. Oh, it's my own fault. I should have shown my teeth from the beginning. He called me a traitor to society. Me a traitor. Well, that's not going to stick. Now, please, think. He has all the power on his side. But I have the truth on my side. But without power, what good is the truth? Mother, how can you say such that a thing? That is ridiculous, Catherine. I have the liberal press with me and the majority. If that isn't power, what is? Well, for heaven's sake, Tom, you're not just going to go and- What am I not going to do? Well, you're not going to just fight it out in public with your brother. Oh? Well, then, what do you think I ought to do? Well, it won't do you any earthly good. If they won't, then they won't. And all you'll get out of it is a notice that you're fired. I'm going to do my duty, Catherine. Me, the man that he calls a traitor to society. And how about your duty toward your family, the people you're supposed to provide for? Well, don't always think of us first, Mother. Well, you can talk. If worse comes to worse, you can manage for yourself. But what about the boys, Tom, and you and me? What about you? You want me to be the miserable animal that crawled off the boots of that crooked gang? Will you be happy if I can't look at myself in the mirror for the rest of my life? Tom, Tom, there's so much injustice in this world. You've simply got to learn to live with it. If you go on this way, God help us, we'll have no money again. Is it so long since the North that you've forgotten what it was to live like we lived? Well, haven't we had enough of that for one lifetime? And what will happen to them? We have nothing if you're fired. Stop it! Well, boys, what did you learn in school today? We, we learned what an insect is. Ha <laughs> ha, well, you don't say. Uh, what happened here? Why is everybody... Oh, nothing, nothing, boys. You know what I'm going to do from now on, boys? I'm going to teach you what a man is. The doctor not come yet? No, not yet. You finish it? Well, what do you think of it? It's devastating. The doctor is a brilliant man. I swear I myself never really understood how incompetent those fat fellows are on top. I hear the rumble of revolution in this. Shh. Anderson's inside. Anderson's a coward. With all that moderation talk, all she's saying is she's yellow. You're going to print this, aren't you? Sure. I'm just waiting for the doctor to give us his word. If the mayor won't go along with us, we print it anyway. Yes, but if the mayor's against this, it's going to get pretty rough. You know that, don't you? Just let him try to block the reconstruction. The little businessman and the whole town will be screaming for his head. Anderson will see to that. The stockholders will have to lay out a fortune of money if this goes through. My friend, I think this is going to bust them. And when the springs go busted, the people are finally going to understand the level of genius that's been running this town. Those five sheets of paper are going to put in a liberal administration once and for all.
Have we got everything ready for tomorrow's paper? I think so. Okay. Put it on the press. Wonderful. What did the mayor say? The mayor has declared war. And so war it's going to be. Ha <laughs> ha, and that's only the beginning. Do you know what he tried to do? Anderson, the doctor's here. He actually tried to blackmail me. He's got the nerve to tell me that I'm not allowed to speak my mind without his permission. Imagine the shameless effrontery. He actually said it right out. Right to my face. The only trouble, the trouble with me was that I kept giving them credit for being our kind of people, but they are dictators. They're the kind of men who will try to hold power even if they have to poison a town to do it. Now take it easy, doctor. You mustn't always be throwing accusations. I'm with you, you understand, but moderation. What did you think of the report, Popstad? It's a masterpiece. In one blow, you've managed to prove beyond any doubt what kind of men are running us. May we print it now, then? I should say so. We'll have it ready for tomorrow's paper. Now, Mrs. Anderson, do me a favor, will you? You run a fine paper here, obviously, but mm -hmm. supervise the printing personally, will you? I'd hate to see the weather report <laughs> stuck in the middle of one of my articles. Don't worry, that won't happen this time. Oh, make it perfect, eh? Like you were printing money. You can't imagine how long I've been waiting to see it in print. After all the lies in the papers, the half lies, the quarter lies, to finally see the total unvarnished truth about something important. And this is only the beginning. We'll go on to other subjects and we will blow up every lie that we live by. What do you say, Anderson? But just remember, moderation. moderation. I don't see what's so funny about that. Dr. Stockman, I feel as though I were standing in some historic painting. This is a historic day. Someday this scene will be in a museum entitled The Day the Truth Was Born. <laughs> oh, I just remembered. I got a patient lying half bandaged down the street. I, I had better. Oh. <laughs> I hope you realize how useful he could be to us. I don't like that business about, this is just the beginning. Let him stick to the spring. What makes you so scared all the time? I have to live here. It'd be different if you were attacking the national government or something. But if he thinks I'm going to start going after What's the, the difference? Bad is bad. Yes, but there is a difference. You attack the national government, and what's going to happen? Nothing. They go right on. But a town administration? They're, they're liable to be overthrown or something. It's always the same. Give a man a little property and the truth can go Ms. to- Ms. Billing, I am older than you are. I have seen fire eaters before. Do you know who used to work at that desk before you? Councilman Stensford. Councilman! Just because I work in a renegade's desk, does that mean- You're I a politician. A politician never knows where he's going to end up. And besides, you applied for a job as secretary to the magistrate, didn't you? <laughs> Billing? Well, why not? If I get it, I'll have a chance to put across some good things. I could put a lot of big boys on the spot with a job like that. All right. I'm just saying, people change. Remember, when you call me a coward, I may not have made the hot speeches, but I never went back on my beliefs either. Unlike some radicals around here, I didn't change. Of course, I am a little more moderate, but moderation oh, is- Oh, goodness! <laughs> I do not see what's so funny about that. We could get rid of her. Take it easy, she pays the printing bill. She's not that bad. I'll get the printer right on this. Say, Hofstad, do you think we could get Stockman to back us? I think we could really put out a paper. Where would he get money? His father-in-law. Keel? Since when has he got money? I think he's loaded with it. <sighs> no, as long as I've known him, he's worn the same suit. The same overcoat. And the, the same, same ring on his right hand. Did you ever get a look at that boulder? No, I never. All year long, he wears the diamond on the inside. But on New Year's Eve, he turns it around. 
Figure it out. When a man has no visible means of support, what's he living on? Money, right? Hello. Well, fancy seeing you here. I want to ask you a question. What's that? The Norwegian novel you want to translate it? Aren't you going to do it? I don't get this. You don't get what? This book is absolutely against everything you people believe. Oh, it's not that bad. But Miss Hofstad, it says that if you're good, there's a supernatural force that'll fix it, and so you end up happy. But if you're bad, you'll be punished. Since when does the world work that way? Yes, Petra. But this is a newspaper. The people like to read that sort of thing. They buy the paper for that, and we slip in our political stuff. Newspaper can't buck the public. You don't say. Now, wait a minute. I don't want you to go feeling that way. Here, take this to the printer. Sure. I want you to understand something. I never even read that book. It was Billing's idea. I thought she was a radical. She is, but she's also a... newspaperman? A... Well, that too. But I was going to say that Billing is trying to get the job as secretary to the magistrates. What? People are... People, Miss Stockman. But the magistrate, he's been fighting everything progressive in this town for 30 years. Let's not argue about it. I just didn't want you to walk out of here with the wrong impression of me. I happen to admire young liberals like you. You don't mind, do you? No, of course I don't mind, but I really don't understand. Reading this book upset me. Will you tell me why you're supporting my father? What's the mystery? It's a matter of principle. But a paper that'll print a book like this has no principle. Why do you jump to such extremes? You're just like your- What? Like who? I simply meant that. Like my father, you mean. You really have no use for him, do you? Now, wait a minute. What's behind this? Are you just trying to make a fool of him? I happen to agree with your father. That's why I'm printing his stuff. You're trying to put something over, I think. Why are you in this? Who are you accusing? Billing gave you that book, not me. But you don't mind printing it, do you? What are you trying to do with my father? You have no principles. What are you How up to here? Uh, Miss Stockman. I don't think I've ever been so frightened in my entire life. Now, please, you mustn't go Where thinking that I... Where are you going? I... The mayor's out there. The mayor? He wants to speak to you. He came in the back door. He doesn't want to be seen. What does he want? Come in, Your Honor. It's clean. I always thought this place was dirty, but it's clean. Very nice, Mrs. Anderson. Not at all, Your Honor. I mean to say... What can we do for you, Your Honor? Sit down. I had a very annoying thing happen today, Miss Hofstad. That's so. It seems my brother has written some sort of memorandum. You don't say. He mentioned it to you? Yes. I think he said something. If you'll excuse me. That's it, isn't it? This? I don't know. The printer just handed it to me. Isn't that the thing? The printer wanted the spelling checked. That's it. It's only a question of spelling. I'll be right back. I'm very good at spelling. Maybe I can help you. Oh, no, Your Honor. There's some Latin in it. You wouldn't know Latin, would you? Oh, yes. I used to help my brother all the time with his Latin. Let me have it. You're going to print this? I can't very well refuse a signed article. A signed article is the author's responsibility. Mrs. Anderson, you're going to allow this? I'm the publisher, not the editor. My policy is freedom for the editor. You have a point. I can see that. So if you don't mind. Not at all. This reconstruction I realize, Your Honor, it does mean tremendous sacrifices for the stockholders. Don't upset yourself. The first thing a mayor learns is the less wealthy can always be prevailed upon to demand a spirit of sacrifice for the public good. I'm glad you see that. Especially when it's the wealthy that are going to do the sacrificing. What you don't seem to understand, Mrs. Anderson, is that so long as I am the mayor, any changes in those springs will be paid for by a municipal loan. A municipal? You mean you're going to tax the people for this? Exactly. But the Springs are a private corporation. The corporation built Kirsten Springs out of its own money. If the people want the Springs changed, the people must naturally pay the bill. The corporation is in no position to put out any more money. 
It simply can't do it. That's impossible. The people will never stand for a new tax. Is this fact or your opinion? It happens to be a fact. Plus another fact. You'll forgive me for talking about facts in a newspaper office. But don't forget that the Springs will take two years to make over. Two years without any income for your small businessman, Mrs. Anderson. And a heavy new tax besides. And all because, because of this dream, this hallucination that we live in a pest hole. But that's based on science. This is based on vindictiveness, on his hatred of authority and nothing more. This is the mad dream of a man trying to blow up our way of life. It has nothing to do with science or reform or anything at all, but pure and simple destruction. And I intend to see to it that the people understand it exactly so. My goodness. Maybe you sure you want to support this thing, Hofstall? Frankly, I never thought of it quite that way. I mean, when you look at it psychologically, of course, the man could just be, I never imagined we'd have to have a new tax. Well, you should have imagined it, because you're going to have to advocate it. Unless, of course, liberal and radical newspaper readers enjoy high taxes, but you would know better than I. I happen to have here a brief story of the actual facts. It proves that, with a little care, no one need be harmed at all by the water. Of course, in time, we'd have to make a few minor structural changes, and we'd pay for those. May I see that? I want you to study this, Ms. Hofstad, and see if you don't agree Are that Are you the expecting the doctor? He's here? Just coming across the street. How can I avoid him? I don't... Oh, right this way, sir. Hurry up. Hurry up. Do something. Do something. Any proofs yet? I guess not, huh? No, you can't expect them for some time. <sighs> you mind if I wait? Oh, there'll be no sense in that, Doctor. We're very busy and we can't... Oh, bear with me, Hofstad. I just can't wait to see them in print. <sighs> and that is just the way to be. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. We are going to make this town shine like a jewel, Hofstad, but I won't hold you up anymore. Ah, uh, just a minute. Couldn't we talk some other time? Just, Where just two words, two words, two words. Mm -hmm. Just walking down the street just now, I looked at the people in the stores and driving their wagons, and I was, well, touched. By their innocence, I mean. What I'm driving at is that when this expose breaks, they're liable to start mm -hmm. making a saint out of me. And Mrs. Anderson, I want you to promise me that you're not going to get up any dinner for me or any, you know. Doctor, there's no use concealing. I knew it. Now, Mrs. Anderson, I simply will not attend a dinner in my honor. Doctor, I think it's time we... We have to talk, I Doctor. I thought so. Thomas, I want you home. Now come. I want you to talk to Petra. What happened? What are you doing here? Something wrong, Miss Stockman. Well, Dr. Stockman is the father of three children, Ms. Hofstad. Everybody knows that, dear. And no what one would believe it from the way you're dragging us into this disaster. What disaster? He treated you like his own daughter. And now you make a fool of him? Oh, no, he's making us. Catherine, how can you accuse these people? Of He'll lose his job at the Springs. Do you realize that? You print the article and they'll grind him up like a piece of flesh. Catherine, dear, you are embarrassing Ms. me. Hofstad, what are you up to? I won't have you jumping on Hofstad now. I want you home. This woman is not your friend. She is my friend. Any person who is willing to share my risk is my friend. You just don't understand, Catherine, that after my expose breaks, the people are going to go out into the streets and drive that gang of... What's this? What is he doing here? All right, let's be calm. What did he do, Hofstad? What did he do? Talk you out of it? He's not going to get away with this, not by a long shot. Where did you hide him? Be careful, huh? Doctor. Where did be you careful. put him? Out of my
my way. Whoa, Peter. Poisoning the springs was not enough for you, huh? You've decided to move on to the press. My hat, please, and my cane. What's this now? Take that off. That's official insignia. I just wanted to show you, Peter, that anyone may wear this hat in a democracy, and a truly free citizen is not afraid to touch it. And as for your baton of command, in a democracy, it can pass from hand to hand. Ha <laughs> ha, so don't gloat yet, because the people haven't spoken yet. And I know that I have the people, because I have the truth, my friends. Doctor, we're not scientists. We can't judge whether your article is really true. Then print it under my name. Let me defend it. I'm not going to print it. I won't sacrifice this newspaper. When the whole story gets out, the public is not going to stand for any changes in the springs. His honor just told us, you see, there will have to be a new tax. Ah, ha, ha. So that's why you're not scientists all of a sudden and can't decide whether or not I'm telling the truth. Well, so. Don't take that attitude. The point oh, is. the point. The point is going to fly through this town like an arrow. I am going to fire it. Will you print my report as a pamphlet? I will pay for it. I'm not going to ruin this paper or this town. <sighs> Doctor, for the sake of your family. You can leave his family out of this. God help me, I think you people are horrible. My report. Doctor, you won't get it printed in this town. Can't you forget? <laughs> I can't cannot you forget it. And you will not forget it as long as you live. I am going to call a mass meeting. And who is going to rent you all? Then I will take a drum and go from street to street proclaiming that the springs are befouled and that poison is rotting the body politic. And I believe you really are that mad. Mad? Oh, my dear brother, you haven't even heard me raise my voice yet! Catherine? Captain Horster? Oh, come in. I don't have enough chairs for a lot of people, so I've decided to not have chairs at all. My name is Billings. Don't you remember at the doctor's house? Oh, yes. I've been so busy lately, I didn't recognize you. Why don't these people come inside? I don't know. I guess they're waiting for the mayor or somebody important, so they can be sure it's respectable in here. I wanted to ask you a question before this begins, Captain. Why are you lending your house for this? I never heard of you connected with anything political before. I'll answer that. I travel most of the year, and did you ever travel? Not abroad, no. Well, I've been in a lot of places where people aren't allowed to say unpopular things. Did you know that? Sure, I've read about it. Well, I don't like it. One more question. What's your opinion about the doctor's proposition to rebuild the springs? I don't understand a thing about it. Come in, come in. I don't have enough chairs, so you'll just have to stand. Excuse me. I don't want any roughhousing. Do you hear me? Come in, come in. I have chairs just for you. There's quite a crowd on the sidewalk. Why don't they come in? Oh, I suppose they're waiting for the mayor. Are all those people on his side? Who knows? People are so bashful, and it's so unusual to come to a meeting like this, that I suppose they were just Good evening, going... ladies. 
I don't blame you for not speaking. I just wanted to say that I don't think this is going to be a place for children tonight. Well, I don't remember asking your advice, Miss Billings. I'm not as bad as you think, Mrs. Stockman. Then why did you print the mayor's statement and not a word about my husband's report? Well, nobody's had a chance to find out what he really stands for. Everybody on the street there is against him already. If we had printed your husband's report, it only would have hurt him. Miss Billings, I have never said this to anyone in my life. But I think you're a liar. You do that again, I'll throw you out of here. Catherine, Petra. Good evening. Why so coldly? He wanted a meeting and he's got it. Isn't he here? The doctor is going around town to be sure there's a good attendance. Fair enough. By the way, Petra, did you paint that poster the one somebody stuck on town hall? Well, if you can call it painting, yes. I could arrest you, you know. It's against the law to deface town hall. Well, here I am. If you arrest her, Peter, I will never speak to you. Catherine, you have no sense of humor. Hey, stay Billy! What's going on here? Hey, you're oh, drunk, hey. mister! Out of here. Now, now look, sister, there's no law that says that a man who's drunk can't vote. I'm drunk. I've got a right to vote. Come on. Your Honor, he's, he's on his way. Right this way, gentlemen. In you go. Come on, fellows. Sorry, no chairs, gentlemen, but, you know, I couldn't get a haul, so just, just relax. This won't take very long, anyway. Glad to see that you're here, Peter. Wouldn't miss it for the world. How are you feeling, Catherine? Now, just promise me, dear, don't lose your temper. Didn't I tell you to get out of here? Yeah, well, if they ain't voting, then what the devil's going on here? I order you to get out of here and stay out. <laughs> I don't like your tone of voice, Al. Yeah, and another thing, you had better watch your step right now, or I'm gonna report you all to the mayor. All right, all right, my friends, quiet down, please, quiet down. I think we can begin. The issue, you see, we is very simple. We haven't elected a chairman yet, Doctor. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mrs. Anderson. This isn't a meeting. I called a lecture, well, I and a I... I meeting, Doctor. There's got to be some kind of control here. That's yeah. right. Control? Hey, what is there to control? Sir, let him speak. This is no meeting. Your Honor, why don't you take charge of this? Indeed. Just a minute. Right. Someone responsible has got to take charge. There's a big difference of opinion here. And How do you know? You don't even know yet what I'm going to say. I've got a pretty good idea what you're going to say, and I don't like it. If a man Amen. doesn't like it here, let him go where it suits him better. Yeah. We don't need any troublemakers around here. Yeah. Now look, friend, you don't know a thing about me. From where? From the newspapers? How do you know I don't like this town? I am here to save the life of this town. Now, wait a minute, doctor. I think the democratic thing to do would to be elect a chairman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I nominate the mayor. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 that wouldn't be fair. We want someone that's neutral. I suggest Mrs. Anderson. I came to elect her, I didn't. What are you afraid of, a fair fight? Second Mrs. Anderson. All right, all right. If that's your pleasure, I just want to remind you people that the reason why I called this meeting is that I have a very important message for you, and I couldn't get it into the press, and nobody would rent me a hall. So I just hope that I will be given time to speak here. Mrs. Anderson, you may have the platform. Excuse me. I just have one word before we start. Whatever is said here tonight, remember, the highest civic virtue is moderation. Oh. Does anybody want the floor? Hey, hey, I heard that. Since when are you allowed to elect at the polls? Come on, 
wrong. This is illegal. Does anybody want to speak? Uh, Mrs. Chairman. His Honor, the Mayor, will address the meeting. Gentlemen, there is no reason to take very long to settle this matter tonight and return to our ordinary, calm, and peaceful life. Here's the issue. Dr. Stockman, my brother, and believe me, it's not easy for me to say this, has decided to destroy Kirsten Springs, our health institute. Peter, help The mayor's not finished. Please, no interruptions. He has a long and very involved way of going about it, but that's the brunt of it, believe me. Well, then what are we waiting for? Let's run him out of town! Yeah. No, no, no. Now, I don't want any violence here. I want you to understand his motives. He is a man, always has been, who is not happy unless he is badgering authority, ridiculing authority, destroying authority. Yeah. He wants to attack the Springs so he can prove the administration blundered in their construction. May I speak? I am not finished. There are a number of people here that feel the doctor has a right to say anything he pleases. After all, we are a democratic country. Now, we all know that in ordinary times, I would agree 100% with anybody's right to say anything. But these are no ordinary times. Nations have crises and so do towns. There have been ruins of nations and there have been ruins of towns all over the world. And they were wrecked by people who in the guise of reform and pleading for justice and so on, broke down all authority, leaving only revolution and chaos. What in the world are you talking about? I have to insist, doctor. I called a lecture. I didn't invite him here to attack me. I've got the press and every hall in town to attack me. All I have is this hall here tonight. I don't think you're making a very good impression, doctor. Please continue, your honor. Now. This is our crisis. We know what our town was before our institute. We could barely afford to keep the streets in condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a dead third-rate hamlet. Today, we're just on the verge of becoming internationally known as a resort town. I predict that within five years, the income of every man in this room will be immensely greater. I predict our schools will be bigger and better. And in time, fine carriages will crowd our streets. Great homes will be built here. First class stores will open all along Main Street. I predict if we are not defamed and maliciously attacked, we will one day be one of the richest and most beautiful resort towns in the world. Now, all you have to do is ask yourselves a simple question. Has any of us the right, the democratic right, as they like to call it, to pick at minor flaws in the system? No. To exaggerate the most picky faults? faults? No. And to attempt to publish these defamations for the whole world to see? No. We live or die on what the outside world thinks of us. I believe there is a line that must be drawn. And if a man decides to cross that line, we must finally take him by the collar and declare, you cannot say that. <laughs> All right, I think we understand each other here. Mrs. Anderson, I move that the doctor be prohibited from reading his report at this meeting. We can proceed to the vote. Well, aren't you going to let me speak at all? Doctor, we are just about to vote on that question. And Mrs. Anderson, I have a right to... Point of order, Father. That's right. Point of order. Yes, Doctor. You want to discuss the motion? That's right. I want to discuss the motion. Uh, go ahead. Now listen. He talks and he talks, but not a word about the facts. We don't want to hear any more about the water. No, 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 no. 
All right. <sighs> Judge for yourselves. Just let me read. We don't want to read. We can't have this uproar. I think, Doctor, that the majority would like to take the vote before you speak. <laughs> if they so will, you can speak. Otherwise, majority rules. You won't deny that. Don't even bother voting. I understand everything now. Can I just have a few minutes? Mrs. Anderson, to do what I'm not allowed to talk about the institute. I won't go into the institute. I have a new discovery that is a thousand times more important than all the institutes of the world. Now, can I have the flag form, please? I don't see how we can deny him that. As long as he can find. The strings are not the subject. But before I go into my subject, I would like to congratulate the radicals and liberals among us, like Ms. Hofstad. Radical? What do you mean, radical? Where's your evidence to call me a radical? Oh, I guess I don't have any evidence. <laughs> I guess there never really was any. <laughs> I just wanted to congratulate you for your self-control this evening. You who have fought in every parlor in town for the principle of free speech these many years. I believe in democracy. When my readers are overwhelmingly against something, mm -hmm. I'm not going to impose my will on the majority. You, quiet down. You have begun my remarks, Ms. Hofstad. <sighs> Fellow citizens, Mrs. Stockman, Miss Stockman, this evening I was struck by a sudden flash of light. A discovery second to none. But before I tell you a little story, as many of you know, I put in a good many years up in the north of our country. Up there, the rulers of the world are the great seal and the gigantic squadrons of duck. Man lives, a man lives on ice, huddled together on little piles of stones. His whole life consists of grubbing for food, nothing more. He can barely speak his own language. And it occurred to me one day that it was romantic and sentimental for a man of my education to be tending to these people. For you see, they had not yet reached the stage where they needed a doctor. If the truth were to be told, a veterinarian would be more in order. Yeah, you my friend, but don't you think you can fog up my brain with that magic little word, the people, just because there is a mass of organisms that have human shape, they do not automatically become a people. Just as one does not become a man by having human shape and by living in a house, and by feeding one's face, and by agreeing with one's neighbors, that name too has got to be earned. Now, when I came to my conclusion about the spring, you are not allowed to talk about the spring. That's all I say. Now, when I came, became convinced of my theories, the authorities moved in at once, and I said to myself, "I will fight them to the death," because what, I know that. I, He's a revolutionist! He's a revolutionist. Let, me finish. Let me finish. I said to myself, the majority. I have the majority. And let me tell you, friends, it was a grand feeling. That is the reason why I came back to this place of my birth. I wanted to give my education to the town. Oh, I loved it so. I spent months without pay or encouragement. And that's when I dreamed up the whole project about the springs. And why? Not because of why my brother says, so that fine carriages could crowd our streets, but so that we could cure the sick and so that we could meet people from all walks of life. So that we could become more rounded and, and more civilized. 
when they refused to believe that the earth revolves around the sun and they allowed Galileo to be driven down to his knees like a dog. It takes 50 years for the majority to be right. The majority is never right until it does right. I want to state right now that although I've been this man's friend and have eaten at his table many times, I now cut myself up from absolutely yeah, good for her. She's right. Answer me this, please. One more moment. A platoon of soldiers is walking along a road toward the enemy. Now, every one of them thinks that he is on the right road, the safe road. But two miles up the road stands one lonely man, the outpost. He sees that this road is dangerous that his comrades are being led into a trap. So he runs back and he joins the platoon. Now, isn't it clear that this man has the right to warn the majority, to argue with the majority, to fight the majority if he believes he has the truth? Before everyone can know something, one must know it. It's the same thing every time. Rights are sacred until it hurts for someone to use them. Now I realize that the cost will be great, that the inconvenience is great, that there is a risk that other towns will this get the Anderson, jump on us. He's not allowed to talk about the spring. Let me Give Mrs. Anderson the platform. Yes. Yes. I'm not through yet. Sit down or I will not be responsible for what happens. I'd like to go home now. Come on, Tom. I move that the chairman order the speaker to sit down. OK, if you will, then I will take my report to out of town papers. trying to ruin this town. You're trying to build this town on a morality so rotten that it will infect the country and the whole world. The only way that you can prosper is through this murder of freedom and truth that I say with all my heart, let it be destroyed, let the people... The people assembled here tonight, decent and patriotic citizens in defense of their town and their country, declare Dr. Stockman, medical officer of Kirsten Springs, to be an enemy of the people. <laughs> and of his community. But that's not true. He loves this town. You fool! Can't do 
a thing in this town without a doctor. Anybody? Anyone can... else? <laughs> With all votes against two, this assembly formally declares that Dr. Thomas Stockman is the people's enemy. In future, all dealings with him by decent and patriotic citizens will be on that basis. The meeting is adjourned. Do you have any room on your ship to America, Captain? Anything you, you say, Doctor. Assume, Doctor. You better go back there. Let's go out the back door. Right this way. No, no. No back doors. I don't want to mislead anybody because the enemy of the people is not finished in this town. Not quite yet. And if anybody thinks that I will try to act quietly. to do it, but with public opinion what it is. Well, maybe we should have let the boys go to school today. Now don't get all frazzled again. Well, the landlord's such a nice man. If he's got to throw us out, the town must be ready to murder us. Oh, calm down, will you? Before you know it, we'll be in America, and this whole thing will be like it was just a dream. But I don't want to go to America. Oh. When did that happen? Oh. Must have been last night. Your best pants. Well, just goes to show you, that's all. 
When a man goes out to fight for the truth, he should never wear his best pants. Oh, stop worrying, will you? You'll sew them up, and before you know it, we'll be 3,000 miles away. And how do you know it'll be any different there? I don't know. It just, it seems to me in a bigger country like that, the spirit must also be bigger. I don't know, although I suppose they do have a solid majority there, too. I don't know. At least they have more room to hide there. Well, think about it more, will you? I'd hate to go half around the world and find out we're in the same place. You know, Catherine, I don't think I will ever forget the face of that crowd last night. Don't think about it. Some of them had their teeth bared like animals in a pack. And who leads them? People who call themselves liberals, radicals. The crowd lets out one roar, and where are they, my liberal friends? I bet if I met them on the street, they wouldn't even admit that they had ever met me. Are you listening to me? I was just wondering. What will we ever do with all this furniture if we go to America? Don't you ever listen to me when I talk, dear. Why must I listen? I know you're right. Petra, why aren't you in school? I'm fired. What happened? Oh. They wouldn't. As of two weeks from now. But I couldn't bear to stay there. <sighs> Mrs. Busk fired you? Who'd ever thought she could do such a thing? Well, it hurt her, I could see, because we've always agreed about so things, but she didn't dare do anything else. Oh, wonderful. The glazer doesn't dare fix my windows. The landlord doesn't dare let us stay in our The landlord? Yes, evicted, darling. It seems to me that on the wreckage of all the civilizations of the world, there ought to be a big sign. They didn't dare. Well, I really couldn't blame her, Father. She did show me three letters she got this morning. From whom? They weren't signed. Oh, naturally. The big patriots with their anonymous indignation, scrawling out the blackness of their minds onto dirty little slips of paper. That's morality for you. <laughs> and I'm the traitor. What did these letters say? Well, one of them was from someone who said that he'd heard at the club that someone who visits this house said that I had radical opinions about oh, certain oh, things. Oh, wonderful. Somebody heard, that somebody heard, that he heard, that she heard. Oh, Catherine, pack as soon as you can. I feel as if there were vermin crawling all over me. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Captain. You are just the person I wanted to see. I thought I'd see how you all were doing this morning. That's awfully nice of you, Captain. And I really wanted to thank you for seeing us through that crowd last Did night. Did you get home all right? We hated to leave you alone with that mob. Oh, there's nothing to it. There's just one thing to remember in the storm. It will pass. Unless it kills you. You mustn't let yourself get too bitter. I'm trying, I'm trying, but... I don't guarantee how I'll feel when I walk down the street with traitor branded into my forehead. Ah, oh, what's a word? A word can be like a needle sticking in your heart, Captain. It can dig and corrode like an acid until you have become what they really wanted you to be. Really, an enemy of the people. You mustn't ever let that happen, Doctor. Frankly, I don't care anymore. Let the summer come. Let an epidemic break out. Then they'll see whom they drove into exile. When are you sailing, Captain? You've really decided to go, Father? Absolutely. When do you sail, Captain? That's um, really what I came to talk to you about. Why? Something wrong with the ship? No. The ship will sail. It's just that uh, I won't be aboard. No! Were you fired too? Because I was this morning. Well, you shouldn't have given us your house, Captain. Oh, it's not that. I'll get another ship. It's just that the owner, Mr. Vic, happens to belong to the same party as the mayor. And I suppose when you belong to a certain party and the party takes on a certain position, because Mr. Vic himself is a very decent man. Oh, they're all decent men. No, really, he's not like the others. He doesn't have to be. A party, Captain, is like 
a sausage grinder. It mashes up the clear heads and the long heads and the fat heads and the black heads. And what do you get? <laughs> Meat heads. Maybe that's the glazer. Imagine, Captain. He reviews the gum all morning. <sighs> If you're busy. Oh, no, Peter. Come on in. We're just <laughs> cleaning up broken glass. <laughs> what can I do for you this fine, brisk morning? Come inside, won't you, Captain? Yes, yes. I'd like to finish our talk, Doctor. Be with you in a minute. You can keep your head on if you like. It's a little drafty in here today. Thanks. I think I will. Oh, I think I caught cold last night at that meeting. That house was freezing. Oh, I thought it was kind of warm, actually. Suffocating, as a matter of fact. Go ahead, sit down. Now, don't tell me. Yes. I'm fired. The board met this morning. There was nothing else to do considering the state of public opinion. You look scared, Peter. I, I haven't completely forgotten that you're still my brother, Thomas. I doubt that. You have no practice left in this town. Oh, but people always need a doctor. A petition is going from house to house. Everybody is signing it. A pledge not to call you anymore. I don't think a single family will dare refuse to sign it. You started that, didn't you? No. As a matter of fact, I think it's all gone a little too far. I never wanted to see you ruin, Thomas. This will ruin you. No, it won't. For once in your life, will you act like a responsible man? Why don't you just come out and say it, Peter? You're afraid that I'm going to go out of town to start publishing about the Springs. I don't deny that. Thomas, if you really have the good of the town at heart, you can accomplish everything without damaging anybody, including yourself. What's this now? Give me a signed statement saying that, in your zeal to help the town, you went overboard and exaggerated. Put it any way you like, just so you calm anybody that might feel nervous about the water. If you'll give me that, you've got your job back. And I give you my word, you can gradually make any improvements you feel are necessary. Now, that gives you what you want. You're nervous, Peter. I'm not nervous. You actually expect me to remain in charge while people are being poisoned? In time, you can make your changes. When? Five years? Ten years? Your trouble, Peter, is that you can't realize even now that there are some men you can't buy. I'm quite capable of understanding that, but you don't happen to be one of those men. What do you mean by that? You know full well what I mean by that. Morton Keel is what I mean by that. Morton Keel? Your father-in-law, Morton Keel. I swear, Peter, one of us is out of his mind. No, what are you talking about? Don't try to charm me with that professional innocence. What are you talking about? You don't know that your father-in-law has been running all over town, picking up stock in, in Kirsten Springs? Buying up stock? Buying up stock. Every share he can lay his hands on. Well, what does that have to do with me? Oh, come now, come now. I hate it when you do that. Don't just walk around gabbling. Come now, come now. What are you talking about? All right, then. If you insist on being A man wages a relentless campaign to destroy confidence in a corporation. He even goes so far as to call a mass meeting against it. The very next morning, when the people are in a state of shock about it all, his father-in-law runs around town picking up shares at half their value. And you have the nerves to speak to me about principles. Peter, you actually think that I'm not interested in psychology. I believe what I see. And what I see is nothing but a man doing a dirty, filthy job for Morton Keel. And believe me, by tonight, 
Every man in this town will see the same thing. Peter, you, you, I... Now go to your desk and write me a statement denying everything you've been saying, or else. Peter, you are a low creature. All right, then. You'd better get this one straight, Thomas. If you're figuring on opening another attack from out of town, keep this in mind. The morning it's published, I'll send out a subpoena for you and begin a prosecution for conspiracy. I've been trying to make you respectable all my life. Now, if you want to make that big jump, there'll be nobody there to hold you back. Do we understand each other? <laughs> oh, we do, Peter. <laughs> Get the girl, whatever her name is. Scrub the floors, wash down the walls. A pestilence has been here. Oh. Ha! Martin, what have you done? Do you realize what this makes me look like? Is that them? That's them, yes. Kirsten Spring shares, and very easy to get this morning. Don't play with me, Morton. What is this all about? What are you so nervous about? Can't a man buy some I want an explanation, Morton. Thomas, they hated you last night. You don't have to tell me that. But they also believed you. They'd love to murder you, but they believed you. The way they say it, the pollution is coming downriver from Windmill Valley. That is exactly where it's coming from. Yes, and that's exactly where my tannery is. I never made it a secret to you that the pollution was tannery waste. I'm not blaming you. It's my fault. I didn't take you seriously. But it's very serious now. Thomas, I got that tannery from my father. He got it from his father. And his father got it from my great-grandfather. I do not intend to allow my family's name to stand for three generations of murdering angels who poison this town. Morton, I've been waiting a long time to have this talk with you, but I don't think you can prevent that. No, but you can. I can. I bought these shares. Martin, because... you have thrown your money away. The springs are doomed. I never throw my money away. Thomas, these were bought with your money. My money? You probably suspected I might leave a little something for Catherine and the boys. Well, naturally, we'd hope that I you... decided this morning to invest that money in some stock. You mean you bought that junk with Catherine's money? People call me badger. That's an animal that roots out things. It's also some sort of pig, I understand. I've lived a clean man, and I'm going to die clean. You're going to clean my name for me. Morton. Oh, I want to see if you really belong in a straight jacket. Morton, how could you do such a thing? What is the matter with oh, you? Oh, don't get excited. It's very simple, if you should. Make another investigation of the water. I don't need another investigation. If you think it over and decide you want to change your opinion about the water. Why would I want to change my opinion about the water? If you simply go on insisting the water is poison in this town with bees in your house, then there's only one explanation for you. You're absolutely crazy. Yes, that's it. I'm crazy. I'm mad. I'm insane. You're stripping the skin off your family's back. Only a madman would do a thing like that. <sighs> Morton, I am a penniless man. Why didn't you tell me before you bought that junk? Because you would understand better if I told you after. And blasted, I think you understand it now, don't you? Millions of tons of water come down that river. How do you know the day you made your tests, there wasn't something unusual about the water? It's not How horrible! No. People were getting sick last summer. Why couldn't those little animals have clotted up just the patch of water you souped out of the river? How do you know the rest of it wasn't pure? That's not probable. The, the sick cases last year... You oh, know. they were sick when they came here or they wouldn't have come. Not with with intestinal diseases and skin diseases. The only place anybody gets a bellyache is here. There are no carbuncles in Norway. Maybe the food was bad. Did you ever think of the food? No, I didn't look into the food. Then what makes you so sure about the water? Because I tested it. Admit that... it. We're all alone here. You have some doubt. Well, 
There always is another possible and explanation. And part of it's imaginary. Well, nothing on this earth is 100%. Then you have a perfect right to doubt the other way. You have a scientific right. And did you ever think of some kind of disinfectant? I bet you never even thought of that. Not for a mass of water that size. Everything can be killed. That's science. Thomas, I never liked your brother either. You have a perfect right to hate him. I didn't do it because I hate my brother. Part of it, part of it, don't deny it. You admit there's some doubt in your mind about the water, and you admit there may be ways to disinfect it, and yet you went after your brother as though those doubts didn't exist, as though the only way to cure the thing was to blow up the whole institute. There's hatred in that boy, and <laughs> don't forget it. These can belong to you now, so be sure. Be sure. Tear the hatred out of your heart. Stand naked before yourself. Are you sure? What right have you to gamble my family's future on the strength of my convictions? Aha, then these convictions are not really that strong. I am ready to hang for my convictions. But no man has a right to make martyrs of others. Sell back those shares. Give her what belongs to her. Nobody's going to say Morton Keel wrecked this town. You retract your convictions, or these go to charity. Everything? There'll be a little something for Catherine, but not much. I want my good name. It's exceedingly important to me. And charity? Charity will do it, or you will do it. It's a serious thing to destroy a town. Morton, when I look at you, I swear I see the devil. You! Now, don't get excited, please. Too many intellectuals here. I'd, I'd better go. Doctor, can we have five minutes? I've got nothing to say to you. I want an answer right away, you hear? I'm waiting. All right, say it quick. What Do do you want? Doctor, we don't expect you to forgive our attitude at the meeting last Your night. Your attitude was prone, no, prostrated, prostituted. All right, call it whatever you want. We have All right, to... look, I've got a lot on my mind. So get to the point. What do you want? Doctor, you should have told us what was in back of it all. You could have had the messenger behind you all the way. You'd have had public opinion with you now. Why didn't you tell us? Look, ladies, I am very tired. So let's not beat around the bush. He's been all over town buying up stock in the springs. Well, what about it? You don't want me to spell it out, do you? Actually, I certainly wish you would. All I right, don't have any idea. Lay it idea. on the table. Anderson. No, no, go ahead. Doctor, in the beginning, we supported you. But it quickly became clear that if we kept on supporting you in the face of public hysteria, that Your we. Your paper created that hysteria. One thing at a time, all right? We couldn't go on supporting you because. In simple language, we didn't have the money to withstand the loss of circulation. You're boycotted now? Well, the paper would have been boycotted too if we'd stuck with you. You can see that, Doctor. Yes, I can see that, but what does that have to do with me? The People's Messenger can put on such a campaign that in two months, you will be hailed as a hero in this town. We're ready to go. We will prove to the public that you had to buy up stock in the springs because management would not make the changes required for public health. In other words, you did it for absolutely scientific, public-spirited reasons. Now, what do you say, doctor? You want money from me, is that it? Well, now, No, doctor. don't walk around it. Doctor, if we started to support you again, we'd lose circulation for a while. We'd like you, or Mr. Keel, rather, to make up the deficit. Now that's open and above board, and I don't see anything wrong with it. Do you? Remember, doctor, you need the paper. You need it desperately. Well, no. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I am not at all averse to cleaning up my name. Although for myself, it was never dirty. Although I don't enjoy being hated, you know? Exactly. Anderson, why don't you show him the just, budget? Just a minute. There is just one little thing, and I hate to keep repeating myself, but the water is poison! Now, doctor. Just a minute. 
the mayor says that he's going to levy a tax on the people to help pay for the reconstruction of the springs. Now, I assume that you will support that tax at the same time as you're supporting me. That tax would be extremely unpopular. Doctor, with you back in charge of the best, I have absolutely no fear. Anything can go wrong. In other words, you will clean up my name so that I can be in charge of the corruption. But we can't tackle everything at once. A new tax, there'd be an uproar. It would ruin the paper. Then you don't intend to do anything about the water. We have faith you won't let anyone get sick. In other words, ladies, you are looking for someone to blackmail into paying your printing bill. We are trying to clear your name, Dr. Stockman. And if you refuse to cooperate, if that's going to be your attitude. Yes, go on. What will you do? I think we'd better go. No, Hofstad. What will you do? I would like you to tell me. Me, the man that two minutes ago you were going to make into a hero. What will you do now that I won't pay you? Doctor, the public is almost hysterical. To my face! Tell me what you're going to do. The mayor will prosecute you for a conspiracy to destroy a corporation. And without a paper behind you, you will end up in prison. And you will support him, won't you? This little victory you will not deny me, Hofstad. I want to hear it from your mouth. Say it to me. Tell the hero, Hofstad. You're going to go on crucifying the hero, are you not? This little victory you will not deny me. You are not leaving here until I hear it from your mouth. You are a madman! You are insane with egotism! And don't excuse it on humanitarian slogans! Because a man who will drag his family through a lifetime of disgrace is a demon in his heart! You hear me? A demon who cares more about the purity of a public bath than the lives of his wife and children! Dr. Stockman, you deserve everything you are going to get! Please consider it, Doctor. It won't take much money, and in two months' time, your whole life... Morgan! Oh, Morgan! Oh, Morgan, look at him! Something's happened! I'm all right. They just... What happened? <sighs> Nothing, Papa, I swear. What happened here? Why aren't you at school? The teacher said we better oh. stay home the rest of the week. One of the boys hit him. They started calling you names, so we got sore and began to fight with one kid. Then all of a sudden, the whole bunch of them... Why did you answer? They called him a traitor. My father is no traitor. But you didn't have to answer. You should have known they'd all jump on you. They could have killed you. I don't care. I'll kill him. him. I'll take a stone the next time I see him. I'm gonna hurt you. Let me go. Let me go. Who are you? Shh. They called you a traitor. An enemy. Shh. That's all. Go wash your face. Good day, ladies. Let us know what you decide. We'll be back. I have decided. I am an enemy of the people. Tom, what are you talking to about? To such people who teach their children to think with their fists. To them, I'm an enemy. And my boy, my boys, my family, I think you can count us all enemies. Doctor, you could have everything you want. Except the truth. I could have everything except that. That the water is poison. But you'll be in charge. But the children are poisoned. The people are poisoned. The only way I can be a friend to the people is to, to take charge of this corruption that I am an enemy. The water is poisoned. Poisoned, poisoned! That is the beginning of it, and that is the end of it. Now get out of here. You know where you're going to end. I said get out of here. What are you doing? You're a fanatic. You're out of your mind. Tom, what are you doing? They want me to buy the paper, buy the public, buy the whole pollution of the springs, buy the whole pollution of this town. They'll make a hero out of me for that. But I am not a hero. I am the enemy. And you're going to see just what kind of enemy I can be. I will sharpen my pen like a dagger. 
You, all you friends of the people, are going to bleed before I am done. So go, go. Tell them to sign their petitions. <laughs> Warn them not, never to call me again if they need a doctor. Beat up my children and never let her into school again or she will destroy the immaculate purity of the vacuum you've created there. See to all the barricades because the truth is coming. Ring the bell, sound the alarm. The truth is out and soon it will be prowling like a lion in the streets. Doctor, you're out of your mind. Don't you say that. Oh, get out of here. I have had all the ambassadors of hell today, but, but there'll be no more. Now, Catherine, children, listen. They call for blood now. They will whip the people like oxen until... <laughs> Stay away from there! The captain knows where we can get a ship. No ships. But we are staying. Good. But they can't go back to school. I won't let them out of the house. Now look, boys. We must live through this. No more school. I'm going to teach you. And Petra will. And will not. Will. Do you know of any street louts, street kids, hooky players? Oh, sure, we know lots. Well, of we'll people. want 12 of them to begin. Absolutely uncivilized. Totally ignorant. Oh, Captain, can we use your house? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. I'm never there. Good. Fine. Then we'll begin, Petra. And we'll turn out not taxpayers and newspaper subscribers, but free and independent people hungry for the truth. Oh, Petra, that reminds me. Go run and tell Grandpa as follows. No. What do you mean? What I mean, dear, is that now we are all alone, all alone, and there's going to be a long night before it's day. Oh, oh, half the town is out. <laughs> to do, Tom? What are we going to do? I don't know, but children, listen. You are fighting for the truth. Remember that now. That is why you are alone. And that is what makes you strong. We are the strongest people in the world. And the strong must learn to be lonely.